All right, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, his DNA findings here, this opposition of science falsely so called. And before we get started, I just want to say if you look into the history of DNA testing, it's very interesting because it goes back to eugenics. The eugenics movement was started here in America, then it was taken to Germany. Well, not, I shouldn't say taken, but they, they took it up in Germany and they were really working hard on it in the Nazi death camps. You have Joseph Mengele and some of these other guys that were doing a lot of DNA testing and things like this. That's what it was all about. It was about the eye collar. It was about, you know, all this thing of your kindred, your race, all this stuff. They were doing that. They were very much into the eugenics slash DNA whole thing there to perfect, you know, make a perfect you know, super soldier and all this other stuff. And then it came back here to America. All right. Um, I think it was called Operation... Oh, I can't think of the name of it now. But there was, a, there was the operation where a lot of the Nazi scientists were brought here to work for America after the war. I mean, you can look that up. Nazi scientists brought to America after the war. Look that thing up. It's definitely a, a historically uh, verifiable fact. But... This whole DNA thing, this DNA testing thing, it is a false science. All right, I'm going to explain why as we continue, but let's watch a couple of video clips here. Paul Wittenberg and I went down to a DNA lab in Tempe, and we decided to get our DNA tested, you know, to figure out if we're of God's chosen people. Okay, now, now here's the thing. I don't believe that the Jews are God's chosen people. Okay, I, you know who I believe are the chosen people? Believers in Jesus Christ of all nationalities, red and yellow, black and white. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're the chosen nation. You see how he mocks, how he laughs about it? God's chosen people. <laughs> that is not the Holy Spirit making him do that. That is a spirit of a devil. Because he's laughing at the Word of God. The Word of God calls him a chosen people. Romans chapter 11. Read Romans chapter 11. They are God's chosen people. You know, and it's all through the book of Romans too, by the way. It's just insane. And he laughs about it. He thinks it's funny. You know. So they went down to have their DNA tested. Let's continue. And we asked him, you know, how far does this go back? He said, this will go back, you know, four or five thousand years. Stop it there. Uh, the, the, this, this testing will go back four or five thousand years. And, uh, you know, back then we were all the same. Really, Brainiac? Uh, yeah, four or five thousand years ago would have been almost to the creation of the world. Uh, we would all have been the same back then. Yes, that proves the Bible's true. Yeah. I mean, read the King James Bible. Eve is the mother of all living. Adam, Eve, comes down from there. And then it splits and goes, Noah, you know, Shem, Ham, Japheth. And their descendants. And the Bible gives you in the book of Genesis. Let me just show you here real quickly. If you don't know about this, the book of Genesis actually gives you the dispersing of the earth. There, the, the different kindreds and things. Genesis chapter 10. You can read this as a different study, but it says, And now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. And it goes into the thing as sons of Japheth. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Okay, goes down through. Then the sons of Ham. And down here in verse 21, the sons of Shem. And God makes a clear distinction that there are three different sons there, three different kindreds of people. You know, general, I mean, there are many, many variations within those three different groups. But God's the one making this distinction here. This isn't me making the distinction or, or, or you know, the Jews or something like this. God does. God sees distinction. God wants distinction. And it's not about, you know, one race is superior or something like this. No, 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 no. God likes distinction. I mean, why do you think God makes so many different types of trees? Why do you think God has so many different types of flowers, wildflowers, birds, butterflies, whatever? Nature is filled with distinction. God likes variety. That's why God created us all to be different. He wants variety. But this Catholic New World Order nonsense that Anderson is pushing is basically, no, there is no variety. 
we're all just one. We're all the same. It's not what the Bible teaches. But let's continue with his nutty nonsense here. And he said, we're going to tell you. He said, we test against 400 different nationalities. I mean, just all different. He said, just of the Jews, they test against nine different subgroups of the Jews. You know, the Sephardic Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews. So he said, you know, we're going to test you against 400 nationalities. And he said, we're going to give you the top 50. Okay. Now let's just, let's logically consider what is being said here. Okay. We have this DNA lab says, we're going to test you against 400 different nationalities. And there, what do you say, nine different nationalities or something, nine different separate uh, nationalities or whatever within the Jews. Okay, if everybody is blended and mixed and things like this, how can you have a pure strain? If there is no such thing anymore as a pure white man, a pure uh, black man, a pure Jew, a pure whatever, if there's no pure perfect example, then how do you arrive at that scientifically? This DNA science thing is a false science. It is an opposition of science falsely so called. Let's continue. The top 50 in order, like you're the most of this, then this, then this. And he said, expect surprises. He showed us his own, and it was such a mixture of so many things. Let me explain something to you. Nobody walks into that DNA lab and just walks out with one thing on the list. <laughs> you know, it's just like Caucasian. You know, or just like somebody just walks out, it's just like Jewish. So many why it's just like Chinese. No. And I'll tell you why. Because mankind has been mingled a lot in the last 60 days. I mean, if you think that today there are just pure Jews and pure Gentiles, you are very mixed up. If you think that there are just pure Jews, you are very mixed up. My Bible says so in Revelation chapter 7. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. God even goes further than to say pure Jews. He says there are 12 tribes that are still preserved. See, that's not scientifically possible. Well, if you're trying to reason things out with your puny little brain and trying to overthrow the authority of Scripture, then yeah, it wouldn't be possible with your mind, with your understanding. But you see, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And this Bible, if it says that there are 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes that are sealed in the end times, I'm going to believe that those 12 tribes still exist. That's what being a Bible believer is all about, you see. I believe God. I don't believe man. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. The Jews were scattered into all nations. And if the Jews were scattered into all nations, and if many of them converted to other religions, and many of them were even forced to convert to other religions, they did DNA testing on the people of Spain. 25% of them had Jewish blood in Spain. 25%. 30 to 35% in parts of Portugal. All over Mexico, people today are discovering that they're descended from Jews. <laughs> okay, um, hold on there. You see, if you understand what the Bible teaches, the Bible says that there is Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem is the father of the Jews, the Orientals, Indians, like Native Americans and things. They're Shemite. So, oh, there's people in Mexico that they, they found that they descend from the Jews. No, they descend from Shem. So they will have some certain characteristics that are similar to a Jew. Again, you know, this isn't science. This is this is this doesn't prove anything. And 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 notice the little impish laughter when he starts to be able to when he and in his little warped mind when he thinks he's disproving scripture. So, <laughs> Let's continue. All over Brazil and South America. Why? Because there are so many Jews who converted to Catholicism in the Spanish Inquisition and other different times. But not only that, there are entire nations of people who converted from other nationalities. They converted to Judaism. They're in the DNA lab, we picked up a brochure. It told us in the brochure about the Hazars. 
And it said the Hazars were a nation of Caucasian and Central Asian type people around Azerbaijan or Ukraine today would be the area. And he said for hundreds of years, they existed as a nation that practiced Judaism, starting in the 8th century after Christ. So all these white people with red hair in the Ukrainian region converted unto Judaism and when their empire fell apart they are scattered all throughout Europe so a lot of the people today who call themselves Jews are not even of Abraham Isaac and Jacob wait a second Paul's it there again I thought he just got done saying that there are no people that are descended from Isaac, Abraham Isaac and Jacob then he talks about the Khazars and he's like they're not even descended they're not even they can't even say that they're physical descendants of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you see how mixed up this guy is? You know, and watch out for all this stuff, all these things. This stuff is not anywhere in the Bible, okay? I mean, where in the Bible does it even talk about Khazars and all this other stuff? Give me a break. Are there false Jews? I'm sure that there are false Jews. Sure, absolutely. Well, then that proves all Jews are false. See, see the rationale here? See the Jesuitical mind control? that Anderson is trying to practice here? I can prove that there are some Jews that are not of pure kindred. That, therefore, that throws off everything. There are no Jews because there are some Jews. Huh? This guy's warped. Let's continue watching this a little bit more. We talked to a rabbi and we asked him if that's true. He said, well, I don't even think I'm of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I'm the son of converts. Uh, so why are you God's chosen people again? <laughs> you don't believe the Bible and you're not even descended from Abraham. Why are Christians considering you God's chosen people again? See, again, you know, see, the, the, the small minority, you know, that aren't really true descendants of Israel, that small minority, that disproves all of them. See the rationale, the logic of this? It's so flawed. It's ridiculous. Let's continue. A couple more to watch here, and then we'll be done with this subject. He's an expert. He's a scientist. He studies this stuff. He sees it every day. Every day people come in and get their DNA checked. And he said they're always shocked. They're always surprised. Why? And, here, and here's a great statement that he made. He said, you know what? If you go back far enough, we're all the same. Wow. Wow. Boy, I would have had to go to a scientist to figure that one out. If you go back far enough, we're all the same. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what the Bible teaches there, Brainiac. Yeah, Adam and Eve. Of course, we're all the same if you go back far enough. But God chose to make distinctions after that. Let's continue. Because I said, well, how far back is this going to go? He said, you know what? He said, the reason we only show you the top 50 is because he said, you know, if you go back far enough, you go back five, six, seven hundred years, you know, we're all the same. And he said, especially if you go back three, four, five thousand years, we're all the same. Why? Because it's not like, well, you know, these people are from Shem, these people are from Ham, these people are from Japheth. Anybody who knows anything about genealogy or DNA knows that that's ridiculous. To think that it's just these people are just purely white people and these people are just purely Hispanic and just purely black and just purely Chinese and purely, you know, I'm telling you, it's not how it works because there are conquerors that come in and take over and, and you know, all different traveling and migrating and different things of that nature. There's all this traveling and migrating and conquerors and all this stuff comes in. So that proves the Bible's a lie. Scientists have proved it. How is this guy any different? How is Stephen Anderson different than an, an, any other atheist out there? Or any other Catholic that says, well, we appreciate certain parts of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, the Sacred Scriptures, but then other parts we reject because modern science has disproved it. That's all Stephen Anderson is. He's not a Bible believer. Give me a break. But let me just show you this thing. He says, you know, there are no distinctions. There are no distinctions. You know, we're all, uh, you know, you go back couple hundred years, 500 years or so, you know, and uh, there are no distinctions. 
Well, we're going to see about that. Just get a verse here quick. Acts chapter six, 16. Because, see, if, according to Stephen Anderson, back here in the Bible times, there should not have been, you know, because it's certainly more than a few hundred years ago. It's a couple, almost 2,000 years ago now. So certainly there shouldn't be any physical racial distinction back then. Right? Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Huh. You mean that there was a racial distinction between a Jewish woman and a Greek father? They looked differently? Hmm, how about that? Let me show you another one. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, having, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And the disciples came and besought him. Blah, blah, goes down through her. Jesus calls her a dog. Up here he says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now why would Matthew say she was a woman of Canaan? There's no racial distinctions back then, are there? Uh, yes, there were. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, read the Bible. Read the Bible. There's racial distinction all through the thing. You know? People getting going to war and stuff with other people. Why, you know, what do they have? Different uniforms on or something like that? Because all their bodies look the same. They're all the same hair color, all the same skin color, everything else. See, Anderson's a, a lunatic. I mean, the guy's nuts. Of course, there's racial distinction in the Bible. Well, let's continue here. It doesn't matter what our nationality is. It doesn't matter what our ethnicity is. If it mattered, God would tell us to embrace genealogies. Whoa, 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 whoa. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kindred you are and things like this. It doesn't matter. Uh, what's the whole book of Numbers about? God doesn't care about genealogies. What about Matthew chapter 1? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Let's continue. But instead, he tells us to avoid genealogies. Why? Because it does not matter what race we're of. It's, it's meaningless. It doesn't matter what race you're of. It's meaningless. Well, God apparently thinks differently. And by the way, in terms of salvation, yeah, God's no respecter of persons. Absolutely. God doesn't care about your, your race, your kindred. Race isn't even a Bible word. Kindred is a Bible word. God doesn't care about your kindred. He'll save anybody. It doesn't matter. Okay, but in terms of national promises, covenants and things like that, yes, God does care very much. Let's continue here. Or not. DNA, which has been scientifically proven to be accurate, which has been used to convict all kinds of criminals of the death penalty and to exonerate and let other people go free because it is so accurate, they won't accept it. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. Because if they accepted it, it would prove everything that they believe to be a fraud. Okay, here he's talking about uh, this whole thing of, of uh, Israel. If you want to become a citizen of Israel, then they don't accept DNA and all this other stuff. Well, yeah, DNA is not an exact science. Again, to be able to prove what is a pure whatever kindred, you have to have an example of that kindred. I mean, how can you go back and say, well, we can prove what is pure uh, white, you know, British or something like this. How can you prove that if you don't have a sample by which to go from? See, it just, the whole DNA thing is, is kooky, all right? It is false science. It is based on eugenics. 
Let's watch one more clip here. This is uh, Israel moment number 51, part of it. I went to a laboratory and got my DNA tested. My parents got their DNA tested. And I'm part black, part Asian, part Indian, Hispanic, white. We're all mixed. This idea of, of, of pure races and separate nationalities, in, in the day that we live in, 2014, it's become so mixed over all the, the centuries and generations that it, it truly is meaningless. You know, I'm an American. I find it ironic that he says that he's got everything in his kindred and all this other stuff, and yet he posts on his different blogs. I'm going to put the videos up, or I'm going to put the images up here. He posts on different blogs and things like this that he is purely white. He is purely of Japheth, 100% of Japheth. Well, then why is he lying to people here in this Israel moment? Why? Because he has an agenda. His agenda is to attack one people, one kindred, the nation of Israel. And it's funny because, you know, one thing that you're going to find that when you study the Bible is you're going to see that Satan is very desperate to try and stop God's plans, to try and destroy certain things. You know, what did he do with, with Adam and Eve? The devil was always busy trying to destroy the seed of the woman. You go into the, into the book of Matthew, and they're having to run away from Herod, go over to Egypt for a while, because Herod brings a great persecution on all the male children in Israel to try, because he's trying to kill excuse me, Jesus Christ. See? And what's the devil doing again? Through the Catholics, he's trying to kill the nation of Israel. Because the devil knows if he can eliminate Israel, it's going to mess God's plans up. That's why he's going after Israel. That's why Stephen Anderson is going after Israel. They're working, Stephen Anderson is working for Satan. Guaranteed.